bucka, 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 bucka. <laughs> you know the deal. The next thing we're going to talk about in analytic geometry is how to find the y-intercept. If you recall uh, from the last video, the y-intercept used to be called our initial amount or our initial fee. So here we have an example of a question where we have to find the initial fee, which is our y-intercept. So suppose you have a banquet hall that charges some initial fee, we don't know how much it is, uh, and then charges $10 per person. So if we have to write an equation for this situation, we're going to let y represent the total cost. And since we're being charged $10 per person, we're going to multiply 10 times the number of people. So the number of people is another variable. We'll call that x. And then plus that initial amount. We don't know what that initial amount is. So as we talked about in the last video, we call that the y-intercept, and the letter that we use for the y-intercept is b. Uh, so, so again here, I've chosen uh, 10 for the rate of change, because that's what we, to we were told the rate of change is. It's $10 per person. So for every one person, it costs $10. Um, so our slope is 10. If we had to write 10 as a fraction, that would be 10 over 1. So our rise is 10 and our run is 1. And in this case, for every one pe person, it costs $10. Well, the goal here is to try to find out what the initial... And uh, we're given another piece of information here. We're told that if five people went to this banquet hall, it would cost $150. So x is the number of people, and $150 is the total cost, we can sub these values into our equation. So the total cost is 150. The number of people was 5. So instead of writing x, I'm going to write 5. And we still don't know what the initial fee is, so we have to leave that as b. Well, now if we simplify this, 10 times 5 is 50. And we're trying to find out what that initial fee was, what the y-intercept was, so I want to isolate b here. So we'll bring 50 over to the other side. And it's a positive on this side, so it has to become a minus on the left side. And that equals positive b. Positive b is just the same as b. And 150 minus 50 is 100. So what that tells us is, for this question, the banquet hall charged an initial fee of $100. Uh, and then it cost $10 per person. So those five people cost $50 uh, plus the $100 initial fee. So that's why the total cost was $150. So here we were given the slope. We were given the rate of change. And we were given a, an ordered pair, a pair of values, a y value and an x value that we could substitute in to our equation to find out what the initial cost was. And in this case, the initial cost was $100. So here's an example. We're having to find the y-intercept, and we're given two pieces of information. We're given the slope, previously known as the rate of change, and we're given one coordinate. So this is like the, the last example, except this is just isn't a real-life example. In the last example, the slope was 10, and we were given a coordinate. We were told if five people went to the banquet hall, it cost $150. Well, as we've seen, an equation of a line is often written as y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope, b is the y-intercept, and x and y are the coordinates. So if we want to know what the y-intercept is for this line, well, we can start by substituting in our slope. Our slope here we know is 5. So instead of writing m, we can write 5. 
Now, if I want to know what the y-intercept is, we're also told a coordinate on this line. And remember, the x and the y in the equation represent coordinates. So if I substitute in my x and y value from the coordinate into this equation, instead of writing y, I'm going to write 15. And instead of writing x, we're going to write 2. And now it's just a matter of simplifying. 5 times 2 is 10. We bring that positive 10 over to the other side to get b by itself. And we find that b is 5 as well. Just a coincidence that b and the slope here happen to be the same. Um, but now we found the y-intercept given the slope and given a coordinate. In this example, we're going to find uh, the y-intercept um, again by using the slope and using a coordinate. But as you'll see here, I haven't given you the slope. All I've given you are two coordinates. If all we're given are two coordinates, the first thing we need to do is calculate the slope. And as we discussed in the last video, uh, to calculate slope, to calculate m, it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And if I sub in my second y value, that's the 6, minus my first y value, that's the 10. Since I went in that direction for subtracting the y values, I have to go in the same direction for subtracting the x values. So in the denominator, I have to do 4 minus 2. Uh, 6 minus 10 is negative 4. And 4 minus 2 is 2. When we simplify that, negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Well, now if I sub that into my equation of a line, and our equation of a line usually looks like this, y equals mx plus b. Well, now if I substitute in the slope that we got here, we know the value of m from calculating slope using the equation we used in the previous video. So we can substitute our value for slope. Uh, our value for m is negative 2. Well, now I've got two options here. I can, I can take my x and y value from the first coordinate or from the second coordinate. Let's take it from the first coordinate. So instead of writing y, I'll write 10. And instead of writing x, I'll write 2. So now again, we simplify. Negative 2 times 2 is 2. Bring that minus 4 over to the other side. It becomes plus 4. And we get b equals 14. Now, I chose to substitute the first coordinate. Suppose we had substituted the second coordinate. In that case, the equation would have looked like this. 6 equals negative 2 times 4 plus b. So in this case, I'm taking this y value and this x value. And then again, if I simplify, negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. Bring that negative 8 over to the other side, it becomes plus 8. And we do get the same answer. So you can see it doesn't matter which coordinate you plug in. You should get the same answer for b. But the point here is, before you can figure out what b is, you have to figure out what m is. You have to know what the slope is before you can get what the y-intercept is. To finish off our lesson on finding the y-intercept, I'm going to ask you to do a couple of questions here. Um, so for each one of these, uh, what you're being asked to do is find the y-intercept. For the first two questions, I've given you the slope and a coordinate on the line. Um, so you simply substitute your slope for m 
substitute in your x and your y value and isolate b. For the third question, all I've given you are two coordinates on the line. So you're going to have to calculate the slope and then substitute in either one of the coordinates to isolate b. Uh, now I will warn you, the third one does involve a fraction. So you will have to uh, use some fraction skills when isolating b in that last question. Uh, if you're able to do that, congratulations, you now have a firm understanding of how to find the y-intercept using the slope and a coordinate.